I sold my old PC on eBay to buy my first custom keyboard. Now some of you are probably thinking, what the heck Blue, I thought your PC drowned in a flood. And uh, you'd be right. Some of you are also probably thinking, this isn't a subreddit video. And you'd also be right. And the rest of you are probably like, who the hell are you? I've never seen you before in my life. Why are you wearing stupid war paint? Get off of my feed. Ouch. But also, how's it going everybody? My name is Blue, and I normally make Reddit commentary videos. This isn't one of those videos. Surprise. <laughs> Also, disclaimer, uh, yes, the PC was totally destroyed in the flood. I sold all of the components from that PC as parts on eBay, stated in the description that I couldn't guarantee any of them would work, stated what happened, everything. I didn't just, like, sell my PC as functional. Special thank you to my YouTube members and patrons for supporting the channel and supporting my content. So, a little background. For the last couple of years, I've been using the Logitech G915 Lightspeed, and don't get me wrong, it's a decent enough keyboard. I don't have it to hand. I, I, friggin I put it up on a shelf in the bedroom. I am so prepared. Yeah, it's a decent enough keyboard when it works. See, Logitech's drivers are trash garbage. The 2.4 gigahertz dongle cuts out like regularly when playing DX12 games. The RGB on it is inconsistent and likes to just turn itself off, especially with recent Windows 11 updates that they just haven't fixed in any of the G Hub updates. And also, by the way, all of these settings have persisted across my old and new PC. So it wasn't even just like it was an issue unique to my old. PC. And also, in the G915, Logitech took pre-existing switches and altered them so that they were proprietary and could only take Logitech keycaps, so you couldn't get any, like, external keycaps and put them on this keyboard. Which is gross. That's, that's, that's gross. This effectively limits the customizability of the keyboard by, like, 98%. <laughs> the keyboard will also run you between, like, 110 to 230 pounds, depending on where you get it and if you choose to have the number pad or not, which is a lot of money. A a lot of money. I think I ended up getting it at the time for like 180 pounds. Now in comes the Keychron K8 Pro. This keyboard has hot swappable switches and the switches all come pre-lubed. You can choose between a plastic or an aluminium case. In the UK with ISO profile you only have the choice of aluminium from what I've seen. PBT plastic OEM profile keycaps and that good good gamer girl bathwater RGB backlight. A lot of these if you choose to get the US ANSI layout of keys are optional, you can remove the RGB, you can choose to have soldered switches that aren't hot swappable, things like that, but uh, I'm British and I have a UK ISO keyboard, which is what I'm used to, which limits my choices, but I would have chosen all of this stuff anyway, so you know. I also chose Gatteron Brown tactile switches, uh, because I like tactile switches, uh, don't at me custom keyboard community, I know you're all about <laughs> linear switches supremacy. Not me. I like my tactile. Now for anyone that isn't a keyboard nerd, I might have just said a lot of words that mean absolutely nothing to you. So I'll quickly run through a few of them. So first of all, PBT is a material that keycaps are commonly made of alongside ABS. This is widely preference and cost orientated. PBT tends to be less greasy and is more durable. It also creates a bit more of a thock sound when typing. ABS tends to be cheaper and ships with a lot of gaming keyboards and keyboards in general, but the feel and sound and preference between them can vary. Now OEM is a profile of the keys, which is the shape and size of the keys. There are a lot of varieties of key profiles and shapes. I have actually bought a set of Cherry profile keys, which we will have a look at later, which are a different profile. I personally did not like the OEM profile. I just could not get behind it. I found it really hard to type on. I just, I didn't like it. It looked nice. I just did not like using it. So the keycaps I actually got are from HK Gaming. They were cheap and they were on Amazon, but they were made of PBT and they are die sub PBT, which means they're dyed and they look and feel really nice. So I am happy with them, but they were somewhat cheap compared to a lot of keycap sets. Hot swappable switches, as I mentioned earlier, basically means in your keyboard, you have switches, which is what the keycaps go on. So Switches are what you push down and it registers a key press. Hot swappable switches basically means that in your 
your keyboard, there's a little socket and rather than them being soldered in, there's a couple of pins and they pop into the keyboard and it means that if you felt like it, you could take out all of the switches and replace them with a different feel or style of switch. Switches also come in multiple types. To oversimplify the types, you have basically clicky, linear and tactile. Clicky are keys that click when you push them in. There's a bit of a pop and they make a loud click noise. A lot of gaming keyboards and mechanical keyboards in general are known for being clicky, but generally you don't have to have clicky switches and most people prefer not to in fact. Lanier are basically as they sound. There is no bump or anything. It's just a consistent press all the way down. There's no click sound. The sound you get is literally just the sound of the key being pushed and then you also have tactile which is my personal favorite which is where there's a little tactile bump inside the switch so it takes slightly more pressure to overcome that slightly that slight bump and then it pushes down and i just prefer that i like the little bump feel it makes it feel a little bit more poppy you know you may also now be thinking what the heck blue you've mentioned lube like twice now and yeah so <laughs> keyboard nuts lube their keyboards now it, it isn't as weird as it sounds uh uh, but basically you can buy lube like keyboard lube and you physically open up each individual switch and you put a little bit of lube in there and it can make them feel way smoother and it can make them sound way nicer however a lot of switches now especially for example Gateron Pros which are what come in this keyboard come pre-lubed so you don't actually need to do that a lot of keyboard nuts will do it anyway because they prefer their like super fancy hand lubed but for a starter who's lazy like me is good enough it's genuinely is good enough now we're we're gonna actually take a look at what was in the box itself. Ignore my grubby mouse mat, I promise it has actually been cleaned, it's not actually dirty, it's just Warhammer paint. So included in the box is a quick start guide, a note about switches, removing them and swapping them, which is great if you're a total newbie and you want to swap switches, extra keycaps for Mac or Windows and also different ISOs, that's genuinely a really nice addition, I like that, I like that you have the variety out of the box. A braided USB cable. Now this one shouldn't be amazing because it's 2024, but both my Logitech keyboard and mouse use micro USB. They're meant to be like high-end modern gaming keyboards and mouse and they use micro USB. Catch up Logitech. Sadly, uh, the USB cable that came with this keyboard was actually too short to reach my PC, so I have ended up having to use my own USB-C cable. It could be a bit, it could be longer. It could be longer is what I'm saying. <laughs> <laughs> also comes with a screwdriver and allen key for disassembly, keycap and switch puller which is nice for newbies that don't already have them, and the keyboard itself. And also a manual that I ignored, but I ignored that so we won't talk about that, it's a manual. The build quality of this keyboard is actually pretty nice. Weight wise, it's actually almost as heavy as my MacBook Pro, like the case is aluminium, also the case isn't too like pingy which is nice. But yeah, so cases can be a little bit pingy when they're made of aluminium. This one is actually nice, uh, probably because they have like a silicon layer in it that very much dampens that sound, but it, that's a nice addition. The, the switches and stabilizers, by the way, are actually really nicely looped. I will say the space bar did make a bit of a ping sound. It was a little bit too noisy, a little bit too light for me. However, I fixed that up by putting a bit of electrical tape in it and that genuinely made so much of a huge difference. So as I mentioned earlier, I got a set of custom keycaps. I got these from HK Gaming on Amazon, not sponsored, none of this is sponsored. You don't have to get any of this. They're made of dye sublimated PBT and they're Cherry Profile. I will give now give a comparison of keyboard profiles because Cherry OEM and the low profile of my previous keyboard are all very, very different. So here's the comparison there. I, I really like this profile. I really like cherry i like how it feels and this set specifically comes with us and uk so i was able to swap all of that out i can't complain that was nice now i'm going to use some magic here and i'm going to take the original keyboard and i'm going to just you know have a little magic trick i learned this from hippio tech yeah, that guy's a wizard i'm gonna do a little magic trick and take all the keys off with some magic and then some more magic put all the keys on wow that was magical <laughs> 
if you want to watch the full video, by the way, of me taking the keycaps off and putting the new ones on, for whatever reason, uh, I'll put them on Patreon and our YouTube members. You can all access them for the lowest tier of entry, I guess. I don't know why you'd want to, though. It was like half an hour of me struggling. <laughs> Sadly, while I really like the keycaps, they look and feel pretty nice. For whatever reason, the space bar just didn't work. Like, it wouldn't rise back up. I don't know if it's because of the weight or the shape or what. I tried the other spacebar it came with and that one's longer. That one wouldn't go on at all because it's the wrong size for the keyboard. I had to use the stock spacebar that came with the keyboard. I kind of like how it looks though. It's like darker than the rest and it stands out. It does actually look nice. But yeah, if, if you ever are looking at getting this keycap set, be warned if you're getting this specific keyboard and this specific keycap set, the spacebar might not work. Don't know why. So there's that. Thought I should just mention that. I did debate doing a thing called the tape mod, which I think it's also called Tempest mod. That's what it's called because the guy that invented it is called Tempest, which is where you get the PCB from within the keyboard and you put tape along the back and it basically acts like a high pass filter. It filters out some of the higher noises. It makes the keyboard sound a bit deeper and a bit poppier. However, this keyboard being a Bluetooth keyboard has a battery in, which would mean I'd need to use electrical tape rather than painter's tape so that it's not a fire hazard. And the only electrical tape we've got is really thin and it would, that was, it's just too much effort. It would have taken like six rows of tape and I needed to do two layers and it would have meant taking apart the keyboard and just maybe I'll do it in the future. If I ever do more keyboard stuff, maybe. I I don't know. I'm not doing it today because I'm lazy. So, you know, but the tape mod is a thing. Didn't want to do it. You do get tape mod uh, spacebar though. So there's that, I guess. <laughs> now, the big thing is I wanted to go through a couple of use cases and compare it in function to my old keyboard because that's the the point of reference I have and it's a very popular keyboard so a lot of people will probably get that. So this keyboard has wired and Bluetooth functions however it doesn't have a 2.4 gigahertz adapter like my Logitech one had or some other gaming keyboards have. Because of this using this keyboard wirelessly does have a slightly higher delay however the Bluetooth still works well and is definitely good enough for the majority of applications just not for competitive gaming. If a 2.4 gigahertz adapter is important to you I did also see that EpoMaker have keyboards where this is an option. They're cheaper than Keychron as well and they still have UK ISO as an option. I just didn't find this out until after I bought the Keychron one but I, I'm happy with the Keychron one anyway so. If this video does any good and you guys want to see it maybe I'll get an Epo Maker one and compare these two in the future. Maybe maybe not. I don't know. It depends on how this video does and also patreon.com forward slash blue the nerd because uh, that's the only way I could afford that. Thank you patrons. <laughs> Alternatively, you can use the keyboard tethered, however, and it's much nicer with USB-C than the method some keyboards use, looking at you, Logitech. And the latency when tethered is absolutely no, low enough to game with. You can absolutely game with it in that version. So how is this keyboard gaming? Well, it's good. In fact, I might even say I enjoyed playing with it more than with my actual gaming keyboard. And also, for whatever reason, the finals uh, decided to put me in an Asian server today, which is why I had a, a high ping warning the whole game. That's nice. The key presses do feel more poppier and more satisfying than the gaming keyboard. I had no issues with latency over wire. I think I actually ended up with less accidental key presses than normal too. So yeah, it good there and you don't have to pay f***ing gamer tax on a keyboard costing twice what it's worth. Whoa, look at it, you again there Logitech. <laughs> Another obvious thing that you need a keyboard for is work and after getting over the muscle memory differences and really getting used to the size of the keyboard oh uh, yeah no it's it's nicer for editing and typing stuff out on this keyboard it it's is for sure nicer we also then have drivers uh so this keyboard uses a software called via which is basically like the most used gold standard software for keyboard customization and it just it looks nicer it's easier to use than g hub g hub is actually one of the reasons i wanted to replace my old keyboard as I mentioned earlier, it just kind of sucks. The customization is a pain. Getting stuff to save is a pain. Profiles unload themselves. Keyboards cut out. Ugh. None of that with Via, at least so far. It just works. The only downside is I can't use it over Bluetooth, but then I can't use G-Hub over Bluetooth either. So there's not really a change there. And it also, when you make customizations, stores it on the keyboard. So when you swap to Bluetooth, that's all stored 
on the keyboard anyway. I'm gonna say it now because uh, this part wasn't immediately obvious and I did have to Google it, but layers zero and one on Via are for Mac OS and layers two and three on Via are for Windows OS. I didn't realize this and I was wondering why nothing was changing when I was changing keybinds. That's why this keyboard does actually have a switch to swap between them, which is nice. If you wanted to use this on both Windows and Mac for whatever reason and for different purposes. You can have different keybinds, you can have different macros, you can have different settings. So that is quite nice. I like that that's a feature. That's that's good. That's a nice thing. And it's so easy to customize this keyboard, by the way, on Via. You you can really easily change all of the keybinds. I mean, you can change just what the keys type out, you know? You can take the Q, the W, the E, the R, and you can change that to, to something else if you wanted to. You can can also really easily set macros and change the lighting on the keyboard. It's all really straightforward if that's important to you. So genuinely, that's that's really nice. You can have different macros for all sorts. So finally, I guess we're going to end on the sound comparison of the G915. The Keychron K8 Pro before spacebar tape and changing keys. And the Keychron K8 Pro after spacebar tape and also changing the keys. I am sorry, I forgot to film a video for that one. Thank you so much for watching everybody. I know this was a very different type of video. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did enjoy this and you want to see more of this kind of video, let me know in the comments down below. If you hated it, let me know as well. <laughs> if you want to see more content like this or you want to support my content in general, then I do have a Patreon in the description down below or equally you can click on the join button on the channel to support me. It helps a lot more than you might realize, but by no means should you feel like you have to. I am going to keep making content regardless. A huge, massive special thank you to all of the YouTube members and patrons that do support me though. However, genuinely it makes such a huge difference. You guys make up like at least half of my earnings through YouTube. So like it genuinely means a lot. So thank you so, so much to everybody that does. Other than that, thank you so much for watching everybody. I hope you have enjoyed. And as always, I will see you in the next video. Peace out.